right, he's down. He's down. We good? We good? <sighs> Shit, Trey. 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 Okay. All right. Just all right. All right. All right. All uh, right. Dude, cover me. You got me covered. You got me covered. Uh, all right. Uh, all right. Keep uh, pressure with your wrist. All right. Uh, I got you, brother. I got you. Get to the house. Get to the house. Get back. You gotta go down. You gotta go down. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get him up here. Get him up here. Get him up here. No, we got you, brother. We got you, brother. Come on. Get that shit down. Get it down. Good. 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 Alright, man. Okay, stay with us, stay with us. You're going into shock. We'll take care of you, brother. Breathe, breathe, breathe. You'll be fine, brother. We got you. We got you. Give me a second, man. All right, here. All right, all right. Got you. Deep breath, deep breath. Hold in there, man. Hang in there. Hang in there. All right, go ahead and clean it. All right, cool. Keep breathing for me, brother. Keep breathing for me. Hang How you there. feeling? How Hang you feeling? You All right, you ready? Yep. Ready and moving. Yep. All right, hold that there for a second. Gotcha, gotcha. Keep breathing, brother. Keep breathing. Okay, you sound a little gurgly, man. I'm going to burp it a little bit. Chicken. All right. Yeah, blood's got to go. All right, let's do one side at a time. All right, blood good. has got good. to go. You breathing, brother? What's my name? Okay, good, man. Good, good, good. We'll be good. We'll be good. I got you. Yep. Keep breathing for me. Yes. All right. Can you clean that Good. bottom up real quick. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. Shit. All right. We got a lot of blood, man. A lot of blood. All right. Ready? Yep. Move. Yep. Three, two, go. Yeah. Right. Clean that touch. Clean that uh, left side up. All right. Good. Bump it one last time. All right. One last time. There we go. Ooh, that was good. That's good. Okay. Ooh, I have to redress that. It's all right. Ready, set. Three, two, go. That's it. That's working well. There we go. Go ahead and wipe this all down. Good job, man. All right, so we just applied a yeah, modified Astrobin chest seal, more or less. It's a sucking chest wound remedy, you know, kind of redneck what you have in your pack. Um, I'm going to give you a really quick tip on why I carried him the way I carried him. Several reasons. One, it's easy. Two, He's responsive, so if you go ahead, you know, he's conscious now, all better. He's going to go and lock your fingers over your chest. So, you know, he's got a wound to the side. I can come under here and very easily, I have a handlebar and a handlebar, and at the same point, I can have him apply pressure to the wound as well while I transport him out. So it's a really good, easy, convenient carry, and it also, uh, you know, slows the, the bleed out and the, the sucking chest wound. Yeah, so what, what happened here, uh, he took a bullet wound to the chest. Um, as you guys saw at the start of the video, uh, we did have a manufactured sucking chest wound seal kit hypervent Asherman chest seal. Um, but if you don't have one, we show you how to make one. And you saw during the video the importance of keeping all the moisture, the blood, off of there. Right. So your your, your teammate or you, you're going to have to constantly be wiping that blood. It's going to be coming out. <clears throat> the importance of doing this. So we're going to before I go into it. The importance of doing this is you have to equalize pressure on the lungs, okay? So if you don't do that, what happens is you have pneumothorax, which is where air gets on the outside of the lungs and starts filling up the chest cavity. Um, <clears throat> now with a female that's gifted, uh, you might have you know large breasts, you might have to move those out of the way, and you might have to double down on your coverage. Um, they, there are manufactured chest seals. This is an improvised one. Had a sandwich bag. It could be an MRE bag. Be yeah, a rubber glove. It, anything. Just um, so one thing they taught us. Uh, you, again, I'm uh, combat first aid certified. Uh, they initially went with uh, sealing it on three sides. The the issue was is that 
the seal would get sucked in to the chest wound. So now they teach four sides. If the person is conscious, do four sides. If it starts bubbling up, then he can pull one side up and burp it. If he's unconscious, then you're better off doing three sides. Right. A, to prevent pneumothorax, and then also uh, the stuff that's out here in the air does not belong in the body. Your lungs don't know what to do with that. One of the big things with the sucking chest wounds, now here we just have an entry wound, we don't have an entry and exit. One of the big things is SpO2, okay? You gotta check their oxygen levels in their blood. Uh, and another thing, when pressure is lost in here, it increases pressure on the heart and it could lead to cardiac arrest. Yeah. And just to elaborate on, you know, three different points, you know, we're just covering an entry wound, not an exit wound. That's a little more advanced. And again, that, you know, classes this weekend, classes this weekend we cover, um, you know, if, uh, you know, a double D woman got shot in the breast, you know, a little different approach, a little different things to look out for. And, um, fatty tissue, fatty tissue. Thank you on a, you know, a really, really large man or woman, a little different. You got to worry about the adipose tissue kind of sealing the wound, which causes a whole new different varieties of problems. One of the big takeaways is if you guys see this, how hard it was to get this adhesive to stick. Um, had a buddy, uh, turn me on to this, uh, gecko grip. It's like duct tape on steroids. You see that? Um, there can be blood and it'll still stick. It, it, that's like really expensive duct tape, but duct tape has a hard time with blood, liquids, and blood is kind of like a oil. So that, that gecko tape will actually, you can put it over blood and it'll still stick. All right, and if it comes to the situation, even though, you know, Dave and I, well-organized, communicating, knew what we were doing, they still, this isn't sticking that well. You don't want to tear this off and start over. If you can, you know, seal, uh, clean the tape, dry it, Put it add there. it here. Even if you got to come, doesn't matter where you got to go. Just seal the wound. <laughs> keep him alive. Keep that, uh, the air pocket from, you know, building up between his lung and his, you know, chest cavity between his ribs. So that pressure builds up, get a big enough bubble, collapses the, uh, the lung, and actually get a collapsed lung. So that's what we're trying to prevent. Is too much air getting between the lung and the chest cavity. Then when that second lung collapses, because this one's already essentially collapsed. Right. If that other one collapses, that's that's what leads to cardiac arrest. Yeah. And clearly we don't want that.